You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Fendo. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. I always feel like... (laughs) I feel like I'm a little on the crazy side is how I always feel, and that's okay. That's okay. Y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10, on a Freaker 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 Friday. Uh, Finally, it's Freaker Friday. Man, this has been a long week. Also, we are coming at you from the RLM Spreaker channel and rlmradio.xyz, RLM TuneIn radio station, the RLM internet radio station, and lots and lots of other RLM and and num and nums. So, happy Freaker Friday. And guess what? The Mueller report was released. That's why I feel like somebody's watching me. <laughs> I don't know Ben Dover. Who is he from Dover? I'm giving Rob some static over in the RLM chat Which, by the way, if you are listening in on the Spreaker channel Thank you for listening, but if you want to chat with me Come on over to reallibertymedia.com Think of a nickname, join the chat, give me some static, I'll give it back Don't be surprised if everybody else in the chat just monkey piles right along with you Because, eh, that's what we do Um, But yeah, I don't have enough internet oomph to be able to play in that many chats whilst I'm broadcasting. And actually right now with the weather out here, it's very soggy. I almost thought about playing uh, It's Raining Men, but <laughs> that would hurt. Um, so I didn't. But yeah, it's very, very soggy out here. And you know things have just really started drying up to where you, know, you can maybe get out there and play in the dirt a little bit without sinking in. And... Now, here comes the rain again. Mm-hmm. Yippee-i-a. And so, um, and my computer's being just really slow. And Fakiebook is having some issues, or at least I'm having issues with Fakiebook. And so, Fakiebook is, I shut it down. It's like, I'm done. Stop it. You're going to be doing that crap? I'm not going to play. So, I ain't going to say hey to anybody on Fakebook. But I am going to go over to Twitter and thank you ever so much Grimner and Barman for tweeting out that I am live and in poison. And uh, let me see. I got 845 stalkers. I mean followers. <laughs> and yeah, Grim said he was stalking me. But that's just because he's following me on Twitter. And probably because he's having to clean up the mess. <laughs> Sorry, hon. Um, what? Oh, friends just arrived. It's official. Yay! All right, J.J. Arthur, author, happy birthday, by the way, um, that's over on Twitter, over on Minds, you know, I really just haven't, because I got home late from work, and so, and it's been freaking crazy, so I haven't been tootling around to any of the other places, but hey, they're over on Minds, and thank you, RLM, I'm sure Barman tweeted it or shared it over there on mines on the uh, realliberty.org site hey grimmy i see you over here too grim is just an overachiever it's just all there is to it and looky there bob renner is here as well as rob works so yeah and if you're interested in a place that you know you can pretty much post whatever so long as it ain't like porno crap because you know we don't really want to see that but in any case, come on over to realliberty.org. Yeah, there's lots of really cool liberty-minded people over here. Also, its sister site, Freedoms Network, is pretty darn splendiferous as well. So come on over here. And thank you, Grim, for letting everybody over here know that I am live right now. And hello, lovely Estrella. Estrella is being Estrella again. Bless your heart, darling. She's... uh calling out Israel and you just keep it up sweetheart that Benjamin nutty yahoo son of a sea biscuit I'll be nice until I'm not mm-hmm 
I do not like that individual. I'm not going to call him a man because that's not what my interpretation or my perspective of what a man is. That's, that's a vile creature is what that is. Benjamin Nutty Yahoo. Do not. There's something in the eyes that just doesn't sit well with this old broad. So, uh, let's see. I've been to Mines, been to Twitter, been to RLO and that effing site. I guess it's time for me to go over to reallibertymedia.com and say hey to everybody over there in the chat. How you doing? If it'll pop up. See, my computer's just being weird. Weird. Um, torns. Oh, tornadoes in North Texas. Yoinks. Yeah, we're supposed to get thunder boomers later on tonight. So, yippee skippy. Okay, over here in the RLM, right up top, I see Barman once again. That he is the, just the most splendiferous bot ever, ever. And then closely following behind him is Grimner, the RLM god. Don't you know? And then there's a lovely Kate. Hey, Miss Kate, how are you doing, sweetheart? Hope everything is just awesome down there in Florida. I also see DC is here as well as Asmo. Chalcedoni is logged into the chat, but I haven't seen Chalcedoni say anything for a while. I'm here as well as I be Don C. Meister Brar down there in the desert. And he's got a beautiful view. He's shared some pictures. Awesome view, dude. You know, people go, oh, it's just desert. Man, seriously, each different part of the world has its own unique form of beauty. Lots of people think Kansas is just boring as hell. But, you know, you just got to learn to appreciate the different seasons. Because we most definitely have four different seasons. Sometimes we have them all in one day. <laughs> But we have four different seasons out here, and each one has its own little perks to it. I also see Ponder Gander is here, and I think Vinny was on earlier today. Way to go, Vinny. I didn't get to catch it because I was busier than a cat covering up you-know-what in a litter box. Um, so, yeah, I didn't. I, I finally got to sit down at about a quarter after three. <laughs> It was like, run, 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 run. It was a busy day today. Which is good. It's good. My legs are getting in shape. I don't know about the rest of me, but my legs are. Um, I also see the lovely Rain is here. Yeah, Rain, you're falling outside too. Rob Works is here, and he fired up that bubbler. Way to go. Wait, who is this we? <laughs> you want to see porno crap, Grim? I don't think you want to see naked poop. <laughs> just saying <laughs> i'm catching up in the chat here while i'm saying hey uh trust no one Ooh, hey let's do this the right way shall we trust no one <laughs> yes that's the way to do it i also see vanna white is here hey vanna you turning them letters like a good girl i'm sure you are letting us know what's going on um let's see there's Vinny. hi Vinny. i see you're logged into the chat as well as w4 uh, w4dkv okay w4d is that okay just yeah i'm thinking wd40 but W4DKV. Hi, sweetheart. I also see Weather Dork is here as well as Phantom. You sweet guy. You just, you don't scare me none at all. People are scared of phantoms. I ain't. I also see Anti is here. Hey, Anti, as well as Beetle. Yeah, I know, Beetle. Sometimes you feel like. <laughs> Cycles is also logged in. Hey, lady, over there in Denmark. How's things going? Uh, Colfax 101 is also here as well as Cyborg Noodle. May you be touched by his noodly goodness. And it is Apostopharian Holy Day. Friday! Um, Dakota is here as well as Frumpy and Grommet. And looky there, Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. And I got me some Java because it's a bit chilly out here. <laughs> and looky there, JJ's, no, 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 JJ's is in the chat, as well as Kozu. And, uh, oh, W4D is anti? Ah, uh, cool. He's in here twice then. Sweet. 
Moose Goyle is here. Hi, Moosey. And you know what? Moosey and Grimner are going to be on later on this evening with the Freakers Ball. Good time will be had by all. I, I will be sleeping because <laughs> I got to get up and wake in the morning again. Um, I also see pom 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 sauce as well as sock puppet. Hi, sock. Are you looking for that porno crap too? Ew. You, you don't want it to be sticky. I tell you that right now. <laughs> I also see Tech Man is here as well as Uno. Uno. Okay, now that I've made it through that, let me go check out the red pill real quick. See who's in there that is not in the RLM chat. I see Apostle is over here as well as F. Canella and Juana Taco and KD Troxel and Quantum Cupcake. Sweet. Soily is also here. So hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. Hope you're having a absolutely splendiferous. Um, oh, that's his shortwave handle. Oh, okay. Thank you, Grim. Okay, so I've been doing a little bit of perusing and perusing, and yeah, I know everybody was all anxiously anticipating the Mueller thing, and I, I want, almost said Mulder because I've been catching up on old X-Files just for shits and giggles. But yeah, this whole Mueller thing, and it's like, really? Seriously? I mean, we all know that it was nothing but a massive waste of money to start with, so whatever, whatever. But, oh Lord, some, some gent over on uh, Twitter is pole dancing out in the middle of the street all righty <laughs> hi bill kilgore deal with it sweet that's a new follower for me over here on twitter okay in any case you know all of this this craziness that's going on with yeah whatever in dc <sighs> it's just stuff to keep you distracted. And what they're wanting to distract you from, I'm not real sure. But um, I did, actually this morning, a lot of times I listen to uh, talks on the internet, um, you know, on YouTube, while I'm cleaning up the breakfast stuff and, and trying to get things tended to. And um, I tried to listen to a video on YouTube. And... Um, Oh, poo. No, I don't want that one. I want... Ah! No, it's not showing me. Damn it! And I can't think of his... Uh, he does mud flood stuff and altered history and that kind of stuff. And it's it's really very fascinating. Um, okay. You know what would probably be better? <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, I have one of those moments where I go, wait a minute, all I have to do is, um, you know what, you, YouTube just had a pop-up. How is YouTube today? No, you're not absolutely outstanding. I'm sorry, you're not even extremely good. You're just YouTube. Uh, static in the attic, that's who it is. If you're interested in any of that... Um, altered history or false history you know why should history be any different from the news that we're getting nowadays but if you're interested in anything like that this gentleman actually comes up with some pretty interesting you know evidence shall we say because some of it really is yeah that's that's why he started getting digging into this is because he was running across things that just flat ass were not making sense you know, historical wise. And so he started digging into it and then he started doing YouTube. And I think he just started this year, actually. But I enjoy listening to him. So go check out Static in the Attic over there on YouTube. It really is pretty interesting stuff. But um, what I want to get into, and, and that's one of the things that he said, you know, he said early on when he was first starting to do YouTube, and I've thought this for years, but 
it's nice to hear someone else say it as well. You know, whenever they start putting something in your face, in your face, in your face, you know, it's kind of like that. It's it's all well and religion is like a penis. You know, it's all well and good to be proud of it and to, you know, just go, I have one, that kind of thing. But when you start rubbing it in my face, it's like we're going to have a problem honey especially if you're not invited we're definitely going to have a problem so um i always wonder when they're when they're putting all of this stuff in front of us what are they trying to keep us from looking at or in, in investigating that's always where my mind goes and then i saw this on facebook no less larry woods had posted it and i thought oh that looks very interesting and it's one of those things where, you know, we were always told that growing up, at least, that the Indians were savages and that and that there's always cowboys and Indians and the Indians always lost and this and that. And, you know, pretty much treating them like they didn't know doodly squat. All they did was run around half naked and chase after critters and and, you know, had no real civilization. Well, guess what? Guess what? This is from IBelieveInMotherNature.com, and it's 31 long-forgotten Native American medical cures. Now, cures, mm, I don't know that I would say cures anymore. The more I research this stuff, the more I'm, I am of the belief, which I know it's a belief. It's just a thought that I have grown comfortable with having, and there it's become a habit. But I got a habit. <laughs> um... I don't think there are any real cures out there, but there are things that you can feed your body that will help your body heal itself. So the only real cure out there is a healthy body or a body that gets the proper nutrients in order to cure what ails it. You know, anything that's external is something that if it's not, if it's not healthy, and quite frankly, if it's not natural, you're probably going to have issues with it. Just saying. So, although uh, Dr. P, who is the, uh, the one that does um, the um, testing of essential oils to get purity and all that fun stuff for different companies, he um, says that actually if something is man-made, is, it is still natural because man is part of nature, and nature made it. So, several schools of thought on that. But, to this article... When it comes to herbal remedies, many of us are familiar with the benefits of echinacea or purple coneflower as an antibiotic, or willow bark as a painkiller, and aloe as a topical anesthetic, and treatment for skin conditions. But that's common knowledge compared to the insights and treatments that Native American medicine men discovered and used. Native American medicine men developed a wheel very similar to the yin-yang of Asian medicine. Now, mind you, their medicine actually was medicine. The stuff we got nowadays, not so much. At least not, you know, the accepted stuff by the FDA and AMA and all that fun crap. So the use of herbal remedies and other alternative forms of treatment was the cutting-edge medicine of their day. This was a holistic approach to medical treatment that relied heavily on plants and their unique benefits. So what follows is a list of indigenous plants, true, uh, trees, fruits, and flowers unique to North America that have surprising benefits as defined by Native American tribes. If and when times are tough, it might be good to keep some of these ancient cures in mind. They also are good for everyday needs when you consider how effective some of them can be. Also remember, um, Big Pharma sends people down to the Amazon all the time to uh, find plants that have restorative or uh, beneficial health properties to them and then they bring them back to the United States or bring them back to Big Pharma and they break them down to their chemical components and they figure out how to do that and then they synthesize it because you can patent something that you've synthesized you cannot patent 
nature, which is probably why cannabis is, yeah, except for the new synthetic cannabis that they have, which I would not touch with a 10-foot pole. Oh, well. Back to this. Now, licorice tea for a sore throat is a good example. Many of these natural cures are still in use today, including beeswax and bee pollen, chamomile, and others. And it's a good demonstration of the benefit of wisdom developed over the centuries. Kind of a trial and error kind of thing. Now, it's hard to know how Native Americans determined which plants might have medicinal properties, although tri oh, see, trial and error was probably one approach. And since that time, scientific studies have verified the medicinal value of many plants. In fact, common aspirin is derived from um, salicin, which is a chemical in the inner bark of willow trees that are used in ancient times for fever and pain. And, you know, sometimes what they forget is it's not just that one component, it's the way that one component interacts with all of the other components that makes it do what it do so well. Which is a lot of times why the synthetic version just plain don't work as good as the real thing. Because when you have the real thing, you've got the whole thing. Not just the nitpick little components, chemical components, like Big Pharma likes to do. Now, these medicines are usually administered via teas or pastes that are either ingested or applied externally. And sometimes the plants were eaten as food or added to food or water. On occasion, a salve or poultice was applied to open wounds. And I would really strongly recommend that you avoid the latter, given the risk of infection from wild sources. Although, I know people out here that, man, they get a cut and they're, you know, there's no Band-Aid around or anything like that. They just go out, grab a handful of dirt, and rub it in. Because you know what? If you've got a healthy immune system... That dirt will actually help. So, um, now, the writer of this has omitted many of the natural remedies, and there was a use for mistletoe that they came across, but mistletoe is essentially poisonous, and if not used properly, the results could be counterproductive, if not deadly. He also found a great deal of redundancy. It seems like everything is good for a cough or diarrhea, rather than endlessly list plants that cure the same conditions over and over. This writer has tried to isolate this grouping to the most prevalent plants that you may find and recognize. And as always, if you're pregnant, check with your doctor and do plenty of research before using any of these. Be sure you can find yourself a holistic doctor in your area as well because the AMA approved doctors or licensed doctors don't necessarily know about this stuff. And some of that you really can't jump on them too bad because, you know, they got their license through AMA accredited medical schools and those schools do not teach them plant stuff. They do not teach them uh, nutrition and if they do it's maybe one class that's worth three college hours so unless they actually don't have a life and research all of this stuff many of them are too busy to do the research you know unless you bring it to them and like my doctor in town when if I need a doctor I have a doctor in town that's really pretty understanding and you can go, I go to her and I show her the, what I have researched and she's willing to look at it and it's actually changed her mind on a few things. And she actually does use essential oils and has recommended essential oils to some of her patients. So it's, you know, test the waters with your doctor. And if your doctor's not receptive, see if you can find you a homeopath in your area. Just saying. So here's the list of the beneficial plants for those who are interested. Number one is alfalfa. Not the guy from the Little Rascals with the funky hairdo. This is the plant that lots of like cows and horses like to eat. 
food chain stuff. Now this relieves digestion and is um, used to add or to aid in blood clotting. Contemporary uses include treatment of arthritis, bladder and kidney conditions, and bone strength. It also enhances the immune system. Number two is aloe, and I have a huge, humongous aloe plant here. It's a cactus-like plant. The thick leaves can be squeezed to extrude a thick sap that can be used to treat burns, insect bites, and wounds. Number three is aspen. The inner bark is used in a tea to treat fever, coughs, and pain. It contains um, salicin, which is also found in willow trees and is the foundation ingredient for aspirin. Number four is bee pollen. When mixed with food, it can boost energy, aid digestion, and enhance the immune system. But if you're allergic to bee stings, you will most likely be allergic to bee pollen. Beeswax, number five, is used as a salve for burns and insect bites, including bee stings. And it's intended only to be used externally. And I tell you what, I've got some beeswax salve, and oh my goodness, that stuff... It's awesome stuff, really is, but you got it. You got to be careful, and you got to get the real thing. And you know, if you can buy the little cheapy five dollar thing at Wally World, odds are it's cut with something else. That's why it's so cheap. So you get the real thing, and it's not gonna be real cheap. I mean, it's not gonna be super expensive either, but. You know, to me, I think I mine was like fifteen dollars or something like that for a little tin that looks about. It's about the same size as a as a chewing tobacco tin. So, just putting that out there. Number six is blackberry. The root, bark, and leaves, when crushed and infused in a tea, are used to treat diarrhea, reduce inflammation, and stimulate the metabolism. As a gargle, it treats sore throats, mouth, mouth ulcers, and inflammation of the gums. Cool. Number seven is black raspberry, and the roots of this plant are crushed and used as a tea or boiled and chewed to relieve coughs, diarrhea, gen and general intestinal distress. Number eight is buckwheat. Once again, not from Little Rascals fame. Sweet. Sweet. Number nine is cayenne. Now, I do like my cayenne pepper. Mm-hmm. Now, the pods are used as a pain reliever when taken with food or drunk in a tea. Also used to treat arthritis and digestive distress. And it is sometimes applied to wounds as a powder to increase blood flow and act as an antiseptic and anesthetic to numb the pain. Although it can be just a skosh warm, just saying. Um, looks like they were having issues with getting two numbers on here. So number 10 is chamomile. And the leaves and the flowers are used as a tea to treat intestinal problems and nausea. It's also wonderful if you're having trouble getting to sleep at night. Chamomile tea. Choke cherry is the next one on the list, and it's considered by Native American tribes as an all-purpose medicinal treatment. The berries were pitted, dried, and crushed into a tea or a poultice, poultice to treat a variety of ailments. And these include coughs, colds, flu, nausea, inflammation, and diarrhea. As a salve or poultice, it's used to treat burns and wounds, and the pit of the choke cherry, much like apple seeds, are poisonous in high concentrations. So be sure to pit the cherries if you're considering this for any use. But yeah. Echinacea is next on the list. It's also known as the purple cone flower, and this is a classic Native American medicine that is used to strengthen the immune system, to fight infections and fever. It's also used as an antiseptic and general treatments for cold coughs and flu. And I always have echinacea around, and I actually got some seeds from my mom. I'm going to try and grow some echinacea out here along with all of the other fun things that I've been planting that will keep coming back. So not only are they good for you, but they're pretty too. Eucalyptus. 
It's the oil from the leaves and the roots that's a common treatment when infused in a tea to treat coughs, sore throat, flu, and fever. And it's used to this day as an ingredient in cough drops. Next one on the list is fennel. And it's a plant with a licorice flavor. And this is used in a tea or chewed to relieve cough, sore throat, aid digestion, offer relief to diarrhea, and was a general treatment for colds. Now it's also used as a poultice for eye relief and for headaches. Number 15 is fever few, and it is used to this day as a natural reliever of fever and headaches, including severe headaches like migraines. And it can also be used for digestive problems and asthma and muscle and joint pains. Then here we have fever ward is next on the list and it's another fever remedy that also is used for general pain, itching and joint stiffness. And it can be ingested as a tea or chewed or crushed into a paste as a salve or poultice. Um, ginger root, I have ginger and I'm gonna try and grow ginger again this year. See if I have a little bit, I didn't have bad luck last year, but hopefully I will have a little bit better luck this year. Good enough luck to where I can have one container that I can bring in um, at the end of the season and keep my ginger going. You know, even if it's just, I'm because it does die back um, when you start coming into the winter months. But if I can keep the roots intact to where the next year they will redo and regrow and that would be awesome sauce. In any case, it's a, a super plant in the Native American medicine and the rut root, <laughs> rut, root, rut, root, the root was crushed and consumed with food or as a tea or a salve or poultice. Now known to this day for it, its ability to aid digestive health, it's also an anti-inflammatory aid circulation and can relieve coughs, flu, and uh, colds, in addition to bronchitis and joint pain. Ginseng is another one, and it's a con contemporary herb that has a history that goes back across cultures for millennia. Now, the roots were used by Native Americans as a food additive, a tea, and a poultice to treat fatigue, boost energy, enhance the immune system, and help with overall liver and lung function. And the leaves and stems were also used, but the root has the most concentration of active ingredients. Next on the list is goldenrod. And commonly thought of today as a source of allergies and sneezing, was actually considered another all-in-one medicine by Native Americans. As a tea, in addition to food and topical salve, it's used to treat conditions from bronchitis and just chest congestion to colds, flu, inflammation, sore throats, and as an antiseptic for cuts and abrasions. Number 20 is honeysuckle. Now the berries, stems, and flowers and leaves are used to topically treat bee stings and skin infections. As a tea, it's used to treat colds, headaches, and sore throats. And it also has anti-inflammatory properties. And oh my goodness, when we were kids and the honeysuckle was blooming, we would go out there and just pluck the flowers and suck that sweet honey out of them. Mm-mm-mm. Neighbors used to get ticked because we would pretty much make their honeysuckle plants naked. <laughs> but, you know, there was ten of us. There's a lot of youngins to be <laughs> trying to keep happy with them pretty little flowers. Number 21 is hops. Now, as a tea, it's used to treat digestive problems and often mixed with other herbs or plants, such as aloe to soothe, soothe muscles. And it's also used to soothe toothache and sore throat. And yeah, hops is used in beer too. For those of you beer drinkers. Beer. Number 22 is licorice. The roots and the leaves can be used for coughs, colds, sore throat, and the root can be chewed to relieve toothaches. Number 23 is mullion. And... Uh, 
as an infusion of tea or added to a salad or other foods. This is a plant that's been used by Native Americans to treat inflammation, coughs and congestion, and general lung afflictions. And it's quite common, and you probably have it growing in your backyard or somewhere close. I may have to look up a picture of that just so I can see what it looks like, because if I do, sweet! Number 24 is passion flower, and the leaves and the roots are used to make a tea to treat anxiety and muscle pain, and a poultice to, for injuries to the skin such as burns, insect bites, and boils can also be made from passion flower. Now the red clover grows everywhere, and the flowers, leaves, and roots are usually infused in a tea or are used to top food and it's used to manage inflammation, improve circulation, and treat respiratory conditions. And you know, all of these things that treat respiratory conditions, I think this is something that is very key for us to understand what will help us with that, especially with all of the geoengineering going on in the sky and those persistent contrails. That's what they call them, persistent contrails. They're very persistent and they're tic-tac-toey and they're very irritating. Okay, rose hip is number 26 and this is a red to an orange berry that is the fruit of the wild roses and it's already known to be a massive source of vitamin C and when eaten whole crushed into a tea or added to food it's used to treat colds and coughs intestinal distress as an antiseptic and to treat inflammation. Number 27 is rosemary and it's a member of the pine family and is used in food or as a tea to treat muscle pain, to improve circulation, and as a general cleanser for the metabolism. And what a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, with helping with the circulation, they all, rosemary also is very good for sharpening your memory. Number 28 is sage. And it's a far-reaching shrub across much of North America. And it's a natural insect repellent and can be used for a standard list of digestive disorders, colds, and sore throat. And if you bundle it up and you burn some sage, you know, you can get rid of them evil spirits, negative vibes, whatever. And there are times when I'm thinking my house would look like it's on fire because I'm trying to... Be gone, you evil thoughts. Be gone, you negative BS. Basically, I just have to turn off my computer and ignore everything that comes out of DC and from the mainstream media. Number 29 is spearmint. And it's used consistently by Native American tribes to treat coughs, colds, respiratory distress, and as a cure for diarrhea and a stimulant or blood circulation. So... Spearmint. I love spearmint. I love it. Number 30 is valerian and the root um, as an infusion in a tea relieves muscle aches, pain, and is said to have a calming effect. And finally, number 31 is white pine. Ubiquitous and the needles and the inner bark can be infused in tea. Used as a standard treatment for respiratory distress and chest congestions. So if you're an expert on Native American cures, I'm sure you can add many to this list. And there are some excellent books on natural cures and the specific medicinal properties that Native American tribes discovered. Natural remedies are worth considering, both from a historical and potentially practical point of view. Just make sure you identify them properly and check with your physician before using. Now, or your homeopath, you know, just to make sure. But, you know, I'd, a nephew um, of mine was talking with his dad, my eldest brother, and he was saying, Dad, you don't want to use those old herbs and that kind of stuff. Just go to the doctor and get a prescription. And my brother Fudd said, you do realize for 2,000 years, people got along just fine without that prescription they used those herbal remedies and that's what they are 
their remedies. So yeah, those who poo-poo the herbal stuff, the natural stuff, really need to do their research because uh, yeah, that's where Big Pharma got a lot of their ideas. Did I touch Barman's butt? <laughs> I maybe did. <laughs> and yeah, Grimmy, I, I didn't grab his butt. I was squeezing the Charmin. So, okay, let me see what all... Oh, Rob's, Rob's looking around for compatible components. So, okay. That was very interesting. I, I love reading into this stuff. It just fascinates me to no end. All of these things that people could do and actually, you know, treat themselves. But, well, now so many have been convinced... Vinny, <laughs> that you have to go to someone that's got MD or GP or something or PhD or some such nonsense behind their name. That's right, Grammy. I am Grammy Whipple. Gramsy Whipple. <laughs> I like squ uh, you know, that I will admit that there is something about well-formed Charmin. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Let me put this over here on realliberty.org. Oops. And if I could spell properly, that would be way cool. Stutter fingers are us. Okay, I think it's time for me to go and check out the pig. P-I-Gazette.com Come on, Opera. Thank you. See what those boys have to say about this date in history. Other than the Mueller report and they didn't find anything. Really? Are you shocked? I'm not. Okay, the word of the day is multitasking. Wow, I did a lot of that today. And, and the problem with multitasking is you have a tendency to do everything half-assed. Just saying. Focus on one thing, finish it, move on to the next. Unfortunately, there are times when you just plain can't get away with that. But multitasking. Number one, switching between two games on the tube and listening to a third on a boombox while she waxes your ride. Oh, dude, seriously? Hambo. Hambo, shame on you. Mrs. Hambo, kick his butt. I know his wife. Kick his butt, hun. Um, the second definition is fitting lunch and shopping into an outing with your gal pals while he stays home and plays referee with the unruly brood. Well, you know, he did help create him. He can watch him once in a while. That's what I'm saying. In the quotable quote section, 24 hours in a day and 24 beers in a case. Quinky dink? I think not. That's from H.L. Mencken. You know, I don't think that is a quinky dink. I, I think that was a cosmic significance kind of thing. That's what I'm thinking. So. Oh, here's a silly. Lady went into the grocery store and asked for 50 gallons of milk. The clerk, amazed, asked her what she was going to do with that much milk. She said, I have a skin problem, and the doctor prescribed a milk bath. And so the clerk asked, pasteurized, and she replied, no, just up to my chin. ba dum bum bum <laughs> In their lead by example section, honestly, if you're an anti-gun, stop or if you are anti-gun, stop making action movies. That's number one. If you're climate change nut, stop flying around in your private jet. If you are for socialism, stop living in mansions. And if you're against walls, tear down the ones in front of those mansions. Yes, lead by example. There you go. And 
I'll add this one. If you are in favor of population reduction, by all means, lead by example. If you think there's too many people on this planet, there you go. Lead the pack, hon. Okay, this date in history. The 22nd of March, 1972. Senate coddles nonads and approves ERA by a 84 to 8 vote. Rational adults refuse to play along. Respond with coast to coast, bite me. And also, this date in history, the 22nd of March, 1985, Clara Peller, Wendy's legendary Where's the Beef Pitch Woman, asks, Where's my final paycheck? When Wendy's slaps her with a pink slip. I really liked her. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? Although it did get somewhat irritating after a while, but yeah, I liked those. I thought those were cute little ditties. Way back in the day when I still watched TV that had commercials. Oh well, that's some of just a taste of what's going on over here on PIGazette.com. Come on over and say hey to Hambo and Porkus. Don't bother telling them that I sent you because yeah, they might, you know, they may not look too kindly upon you. Never know. Oh well. This date in history. His story. And his story. This one's just about in the his story can ah that's why things were running slow my malware bites was running a scan in the background okay that works it's okay it just let me know it didn't find any any nastiness so that's awesome sauce thank you malware bites for letting me know now what's coming up later on here on real liberty media we have grimner and moose girl with uh, the Freakers Ball on Friday evening. That starts at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. And like I said, I will probably be in bed by then. <laughs> Just so I can get up early and get my butt to work on time. Um, tomorrow at noon Eastern Time, the dork table with Flash Rooney Dork and whoever else he can con into coming in. I don't think he really has to con people. There's a lot of people that like to act dorkular. But, yeah, Flash and the Dork Table here on Real Liberty Media at noon Eastern Time. Uh, the Ocelli Effect is on every, mo well, actually, Monday through Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Channel 14. If you are interested in that, go check out Chuck Ocelli. You never know what you might learn there. Sunday at noon Eastern Time, you got Grimner playing the blues here on RLM. And in the chat, there's usually a rousing game of trivia going on. And it's one of those games that me, I, you know, I switch over, I start checking it out, and I just about finish reading the question, and either Kate or Moose or Grim already has the answer. <laughs> Now, does that say I'm a slow reader or they're just Speedy Gonzaleses? I'm thinking it's a little bit of both. Little bit of both. But directly following that fun fest over there on RLM will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop ass on yo ass behind the woodshed on RLM radio. Then on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, or at least according to my schedule, is that still correct, Amundo Grimm? According to my schedule, Monday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Grimner with his leftovers. Always some tasty brain food. It's had time to simmer for flavors to mingle. Check it out. You'd be surprised how much you enjoy it. Then Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time is in a perfect world with Flash and possibly Vinny. You never know. I will be back on Wednesday for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of the Rocket Chair here on Real Liberty Media. And then next week, Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time is Flash Rooney with 20% off. But remember, he probably marked it up 30% before he took that 20% off. That's just how Flasher rolls. I have spoken! <laughs> He's such a goof. 
Such a goof. Yes. Yes, it's still correct. Yes. Yay. You schedule scans for what? What, what? <laughs> oh, Grimmy. See how you are trying not to get that. I know better. I know you got that. Okay. Mueller and his Russian probe. A Russian probe. I'm just not going to go there. <laughs> My mind went somewhere where it probably shouldn't have gone. So I'm just not going to go there to that whole Russian probe thing. Okay? I'll just let you guys check it out. Okay, come on. Oops, we'll do this. Go back to my pocket queue. Um, oh, Cowboy Tech sent me this. I don't know if he sent it last night or earlier today. Let me see if I can refresh it. It's a meme from over on Mines. It's sending the request now. My computer is still running slow, so ah, there we go. Here's a little known fact. The first testicular guard, called the box, was used in cricket in 1874. And the first helmet was used in 1974. It took 100 years for men to realize that the brain is also important. But um bum bum <laughs> Oh, sometimes we think with something other than our brain. And I'm not just saying, you know, using your gut to think. Because, you know, using your gut to think is not necessarily a bad thing. That is your other brain. But, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Now, there's my pocket. Let's see. Um, did the San Fran Nan, did that, did that, did that. Oh, I don't know if I shared this one or not, but if I can get it before my time runs out and I only have five minutes. <laughs> um, this is an amazing 1930s pharmacist map of herbal cures released to the public. <clears throat> Now, it's originally from December 7th of 2017, so, but I'm going to go ahead and share this with y'all so that um, it really is pretty cool. I mean, it's got the, the map of the United States and the different medicinal or uh, herbal treatments. Come on. Slowdy poke, slowdy poke. So, come on. It's it's taking its time. It's taking its time. Here we go. This really is pretty cool, though. Um, to check out, just kind of a little um addition to the article that I covered today. And let's see, do I have, yeah, I'll just do this real quick. Uh, the Big Pharma Distorting Medicine Science. Uh, so while pharmaceutical companies continue to distort medical science in order to push their products by and large, physicians and other medical professionals are finally starting to speak out. Dr. Marcia um, Engel, who is a physician and longtime editor in chief of the New England Medical Journal states that it is simply no longer possible to be live much of the clinical clinical research that is published or to rely on the judgment of trusted physicians or authority authoritative medical guidelines I take no pleasure in this conclusion which I reach slowly and reluctantly over my two decades as an editor to the New England Journal of Medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Slowly and reluctantly, they are dragging their heels, but it's because the patients are saying, 
Okay, we've had it. Enough. We're going back to the stuff that doesn't have a great big 10-page adverse side effects to it. So, thank you all for listening in on the Rocket Chair on this Freaker Friday evening. Once again, I will be back next week Wednesday for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition. But until then, I'll be popping in from time to time over the weekend saying, Hey, how you doing? And uh, please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night.